Hello everybody, this is Xenocat823543. Welcoming you back to Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles. Now you may be wondering why I made it 11pm. That's because from now on, also Charla's moving really fast now because I have a quick step gem on her. I have two quick step gems on her actually, which is really nice. But let's just skip ahead over here. The reason it's 11 p.m. is because there's an achievement I'm trying for, which requires you to it tick from 11 to 12, and then from 4 to 5, for 11 p.m. to midnight, and then 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. So have the word daytime flash across the screen 366 times. So from now on, I will be playing. Since the Colony 6 music is the same, and the Ethermine music as Bionis Leg, and the Ethermine music, which is the next area, is, is the same it's day and night. Did people really live here? And so much has changed. Just going to have it. It's only been a month. Be we'll find you, Ju, and then smash some metal. Okay, I'll wait. wait. We can't just rush in. We could enter through the mine. Mine? There's a massive ether deposit under the colony. The first settlers here built right on top of the mine. That's how we got our colony. The mine is like a network of tunnels. Yeah, the mine. It's much more complicated than the colony streets. They can't have but figured it all out in the space of a month. So basically, I'm just going to try for that achievement if we want to for now. Unseen. You're catching on. Great. So how do we get in? Because basically, Through every six jump, minutes it's just up ahead. equals one time, and it's already happened a few times just naturally in this playthrough, but I mean, I wasn't going to do just, I mean, I have to do something to try for it, because if you don't, if you play normally and don't change the time at all, it takes 147 hours of playing to get, which is why I'm doing this changing time thing. Anyway, yeah, so now we've actually been introduced to this area, which is Colony 6. I'm gonna go and talk to da and it, let's try Daz's quest chain. So yeah, I'm sorry this video is going to be questing. It actually probably will be a lot of questing in this video. And I'm really sorry about last video, it was really boring. And short comments on this one. And we have to find the knob on coin. And this will take us to a future area of Colony 6. The reason I didn't accept this earlier is because we could have not have completed it until this point in the plot. And I also want to get working on the Colony 6 Collectopedia, of course. Did we just... Nope, we didn't complete it fully, but there's the serious anemone. Good to know. And the cute orchid, which gives us an auto-attack stealth too. And now, for some reason, this elevator is working now. And yeah, we need to go down the elevator. Oh good, we all made it. Sometimes not all of your party makes it onto the elevator. And that's funny. And we've reached the splintered path. Which is the location that we needed to get to. There are enemies here, they're not hard. And this path is basically just a bunch of branching pathways. 
that kind of arch across here. There's a few couple Easter crows. There's an Easter crows deposit over there. It's a wind deposit. I'll show it off, I guess. It. Yay. Grab some crystals. And these are rank 2 crystals, by the way. Yeah, see, I haven't done any gem crafting at all, and we're already getting rank 2 crystals. Which, if we do get good at gem crafting, can be turned into rank 3 gems. Like, really. I have, my gems are good enough, as it is. This is, why, this is why I don't really use rank 1 crystals, ever. They just aren't worth it. And now let's head over here. Because at the end of this path is the Nopon coin, which we need for proof of status, which is Daz's first quest. Now I could return that right now, but we haven't discovered a single landmark here, and I think that was the last Collectopedia item, actually. Yes, it was. For completing the category, we get Paralysis Resist, which I don't really care for, and we get some piece of armor. Lovely. I don't really care about that piece of armor. It doesn't matter. You you might want to worry about these if you're act if you were actually around the level of the boss. The first boss, I mean. And now we've reached the drainage outlet. So let's head back to Daza. Yeah, that's a landmark. Which that's what I wanted to discover. Strangely, there are only two unique monsters in all of Colony 6, and we can only hunt one of them now. I will be hunting him in a little bit, in a little bit, but there's a certain time that I want to hunt him. Well, not time, but weather. And yeah, there's comment. There's some affinity. And we resolved Daz's problems. This is the next quest, by the way. Find comments. And there, safety first. And these quests, you could actually wait until the end of the game to do. I'm just taking on these quests now because they're convenient. What we need to do is, I believe, defeat a certain number of soft hoxes, which are right here. Yeah, we just have to defeat Hoxes. Yeah, this is going to be a long quest. Fortunately, we only have to defeat... There aren't that many enemies to defeat. It's six Soft Hoxes, which is the big thing. But look at how many are, like, right here. It's basically just clear this path. And the first dawn is about to happen. Wow, these guys are dying quickly. Let's get this 
and it's daytime, which means, you know what, because of that achievement, let's turn it back to 11 o'clock. <gasps> Rain! Is it thundering? Please tell me it's thundering. No, it's just rain. Nope, it is thundering. In this case, I will not be hunting the yellow ant. I will stop my hunting and head over to the drainage outlet. Because there are some very good things to hunt. One thing, for one thing, you can see some Grom Nebulas here. I'm going to skip on these guys. These other enemies are still out, but there's a certain enemy that I want to hunt. The guy that I really want to hunt is Graceful Holland. He is not immune to sleep, but he is immune to break, so you might want to watch out for that. And he has that art, which can be pretty bad. Just really just keep doing damage. Oh no, he's charging up for something. When he does that, be careful. Use heal round. And just keep fighting. There's one other thing I want to do while it's raining, but which is for the quest, but I just figured while it was raining, I would hunt this guy. Oh, dear it. Ryan fell over the edge, which means that... Ryan fell down the edge, so we have to wait for him to come back. I'm going to use a heal round to heal everyone. Where even is Ryan? Like, I have no idea where Ryan is. I think he fell down onto a lower level. But yeah, this fight can be intense. And yeah, this fight is dragging on. Let's kill everyone. And there, Graceful Holland is defeated. That's the only unique monster we can fight in this whole area. And that's what we get from it. So yeah. Now, skip traveling back to the drainage outlet. There's one other thing that I want to do in this general area. Which is fight these Upas. Because we need them for safety first. I think the last quest in Daz's chain will run into the next video, but... Oh well.
Ooh. Oh. Wait. I think I know what that achievement is, and if so, I just got a ton of affinity. I'm not sure how what affinity level that is, but I'm actually kind of scared to look, because I have not been monitoring Shulk and Ryan's affinity. No, okay, it's only that link. Charlotte's made it to green with Ryan, but not... Oh, that was something else I wanted to do. I wanted to get Shulk... Yeah, I'm going to finish this quest in the next video, uh, but between videos, just so you know, I will probably be gifting Shulk and Charla up to Green Affinity, just so I can get that out of the way. See you next time, where we'll take on the Yellow Antols and see what else Daza has in store for us.